Okay, this go around with nitro engines. I'm going to start with the very basics. Basically all the parts of a nitro engine and then from there we're, we are going to, well I'm going to go to uh, how to set it up, how to break it in, and then how to tune it. All nitro engines work with same, pretty much the same way. They have a glow plug and they work on a two-stroke method. Basically, every time the cylinder comes top dead center, explosion happens, forcing the piston downwards, spinning the crankshaft, a reciprocal motion is turned into a rotating motion, and that's how you get your bell crank. We're gonna have I'm gonna go over all the names of the parts on the engine in just a second, but that's how you get the spinning motion, so your tires will spin. Uh, here we have a TRX Pro 15, nothing special. This is what you would get if you get a Nitro Sport, a Traxxas. These are just the two motors I have pulled out of vehicles that I'm not using. This is a Traxxas 3.3. Um, the parts are, of course, you have the case itself. Inside the case, you have the piston sleeve and the piston itself, along with the crankshaft and the connecting rod. Uh, they're usually ABC engines, meaning aluminum, brass, chrome. Uh, different manufacturers use these in different ways. Like some of them may use a brass piston sleeve, uh, chrome plated. Just there's a bunch of different combinations. Um, inside of the block and the piston sleeve itself, there, uh, the block itself is going to have one hole for the exit for the exhaust, usually, sometimes maybe more, and then there's going to be basically little channels that are grooved into the inside of the engine block itself, the crankcase, also that's what it's known as, also, uh, that allow the air fuel mixture to come up into the combustion chamber. These do not have valves. Uh, the way the air fuel mixture gets into the combustion chamber is from an effect known as scavenging. The exhaust leaving the engine creates a vacuum that sucks the, sucks the new air fuel mixture in to combust it. You also have your carburetor up top. Uh, this is nothing but uh, the cooling head. It has three purposes. It holds your glow plug up top can't see it because yeah there you can see it down in there uh hold your glow plug keeps the engine cool because you can see how many fins there are it has a lot of surface area to remove as much heat as possible and uh it also seals off the combustion chamber because it's not going to work 100 percent efficiently if you do not have it 100 percent sealed carburetor uh, sometimes you have a low speed sometimes you have a mid speed uh, needle uh, there's two types of carbs you have the slide type carb where you have an entire part that slides open and then you have these are usually for the weaker engines but it's sort of like a butterfly valve type there's a part that spins and it's, it, it's a barrel that spins that has a hole in it and up top on both of them you can see you have the high speed needle uh, basically when you have the throttle wide open, this is what regulates the amount of fuel that goes into the engine. See, right here and right here. And then of course you have an exhaust. This one doesn't have an ex uh, exhaust header on it right now. This one does. Uh, this one also has the Traxxas Easy Start on it. This one doesn't. Yeah, that's the difference in that. Uh, basically, all the tracks easy start is is a electric motor that turns it over, so you're not having to constantly pull at a little cord to get it to turn over. Easy, but uh, a little more expensive. Uh, here lately, I've been more into the pull the, the pull start because these motors go bad. They add weight. Yeah. And yeah, you have the carburetor, and then you have, of course, the flywheel. Uh, these grooves are here because some are bump start. Like I said, you have some have this little motor, Traxxas. Some uh, HPI has roto start, where you have this big box 
with a motor in it that you plug in a, a shaft into the back and it turns the crankshaft over well it turns the engine over it turns the crankshaft with turns the engine over and starts it and then you have bump start which you have again a a box with a rotating motor in it but on the end you have a piece of rubber that will hit this and cause it to spin most nitro engines if you're looking at the front of it it is going to spin counterclockwise if you want to see if a nitro engine still has good compression rotate it counterclockwise and if it is difficult to do with one one finger it still has a decent com compression also known as a pinch you can also take the head off uh, put some WD-40 on it and as long as WD-40 doesn't leak down the sides of the piston I mean that's that's not a foolproof method uh, but I mean even then you can still get it running but it won't run at a hundred percent then of course on the back of the crankcase you have the uh, back plate that's where the pull start will go or the whatever you, pull start roto start easy start that's where that goes to there's going to be a one-way bearing on that this already has that installed i mean this is the full engine i can put this in a vehicle right now i'm actually building up a nitro sport which was actually my very first rc i mean nitro rc and my very first true rc was a Traxxas t-max and 3.3 comes on it but i'm in the process of getting a big block and i'm going to install a big block in it and it's going to be all aluminum yeah but i digress with these motors like i said inside of the crankcase there's going to be uh basically little grooves that are going to allow the air fuel mixture to come up on the side of the uh the side of the piston sleeve that has from three to eight holes in it depending on depending on the maker some even have 12 i mean i don't know of any that have 12 but i know that some of the very good ones like uh lrp i believe it is uh quite a few um have eight some have seven and that's to allow more air, more fuel, the air mixture to get in faster, more efficiently, and combust and get out. Another reason why this is better is because it's more of a flow-through type. You have the carburetor on the front, exhaust port on the back. This one has is carburetor on the front, exhaust port on the side. So less efficient because... It can't just flow through after combustion it can't just flow through and also the uh, the scavenging process doesn't work as well because it's coming out the side instead of the back this is a 3.3 R uh, this is the strongest fastest motor the Traxxas makes uh, usually you're gonna want to put these have I believe a five millimeter opening on the carburetor don't quote me uh, but you can get a low C carburetor and put a six millimeter carb on it and you're allowing more air more fuel to come in and you're going to get a bigger bang so that's the basics of a nitro engine I mean also on the very front you have uh, under this you have your clutch shoes these are somewhat worn out I need to get new ones a spring is wrapped around them so basically what it does is when this is spinning the shoes don't just go flying around there's a bearing still on here right here so let me take that off yeah yeah these are the clutch shoes uh there's from two to four clutch shoes depending on what you get racing usually has three or four so you have the clutch shoes that are going to touch the inside of this clutch bell, causing it to spin. Touching your spur gear, this is basically your pinion gear. If you're if you're into electrics more than nitros, this would be your pinion gear. So that is what will cause the transmission to spin, which would spin your wheels. Uh, this motor, I actually just completely. 
I used parts that I had sitting around to build a whole new engine so I'm going to have to break this one in and everything it does not have good compression so I'm not figure out what the hell is going on there get, uh, figure out the shims stuff like that oh yeah there are shim uh, some engines there's a shim between the exhaust head and the uh, crankcase itself to change combustion also glow plugs are different some are extremely hot some are heavy duty some are medium uh, they glow at different heat ranges uh, I believe these the racing ones actually glow at a hotter temperature than just a puny little pro 0.15 and this actually has the racing header on it from Traxxas uh, I had it and then my Nitro Sport took a crap and then I was just like fuck it I'll get a nit uh, Nitro Rustler got that and that's what this is going to go in I'm going to have a Nitro Rustler with a 3.3 R instead of a 2.5 R which is what comes in them yes this is a 2.5 but it is not a R it the 2.5 R looks like this but just smaller and those are the parts of a nitro engine and like I said they work very similar to a uh, two-stroke engine except they use combustion instead of a spark to get compression that's why compression is so so much of a big deal with these. You have to have good combustion, just like with a diesel engine. These are essentially a diesel engine, just a two-stroke. And yes, they did used to make two-stroke diesel engines. Look it up. Uh, Detroit Diesel was famous for them. But they got rid of them because two-stroke is very bad with emissions. Because, like I said, the you basically have bare fuel coming out because... When the piston is at top, I mean bottom dead center, both the intake and the exhaust ports are open at the same time. So when the exhaust is coming out, yes, some some bare air fuel mixture is going to come out. Also, with how it works is there is the crankshaft is hollow. It has a little slot on the top, and then there's a hole on the back, and as this is rotating, there's sort of the timing of when the air fuel mixture comes in. The air fuel mixture comes in, the air comes in through the carburetor. A venturi is created, which is a little vacuum that sucks fuel into the carburetor. This, it then goes down into the crankshaft and out the hole in the back of the crankshaft and goes into the crankcase. And that's with those little slots. And you can't see the slots because I'd have to get another crankcase. Yeah, my clutch bell fell off. Uh, but I'd have to get another crankcase without a sleeve in it and show you that they have little slots. These just have three intake slots. And that's how the fuel gets up into the combustion chamber. It As soon as the... Usually once it gets halfway up, it completely seals off both ports that's basically your valves they don't work like valves they do not move they're just openings but that's part one of a three-part series on how nitros work this is the basics the parts of them and just to let you know a servo is going to open and close this usually open it and it'll close back by itself but a servo is usually needed to hold it closed that's why the uh, servos have springs on i mean the servo arms not arms uh the servo linkages have springs on them and you can adjust the spring tension to pull this closed because with my rustler i actually had to tighten up that spring tension because it wouldn't stay closed i always had a high idle oh yeah can't forget you also have the idle screw right there which opens the with these it opens the slide a certain amount usually with these you want one or two centimeter one or two millimeters with the racing uh, carbs you're looking at between 0.5 millimeters and one millimeter with this you're looking at about the same thing but you have that rotating barrel with a hole in it so there's the difference in those 
that's the biggest difference in a in my opinion a crappy carb and a good carb for a nitro engine you always want to go with a slide uh, it can be bigger and also it's more efficient because it'll completely move out of the way unlike this if I completely open this you can actually well you can't but I can actually still see some of that barrel that has a hole in it I really don't like these but it's still nice to have an extra uh, extra one that my fiance can goof around with because I mean women they're not into this nearly as much as us guys are but hell we're men we like our expensive ass toys so until the next video which we'll go through the break-in procedures there's different ways to break in i'll get into that in the next video but till next time peace